In this video, four different ways to cold brew tea and how they taste, so that you can choose the best iced tea for you. So, let's get started! Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanoshan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. And when it's so hot outside, like in this summer, you really feel the need of a cold brew to really enjoy tea sometime. And here in the southern United States, it's really, really hot. So I thought, let's do a video on how to prepare iced tea. And in particular, not only one method, but I came up with four different methods that all results in different brewing time, in different preparation time, and in different taste, so that you can choose the best one you like. So first of all, which tea to choose? You can really brew cold, cold brew, any type of tea. They will result in different tastes, and uh, also the different brewing methods will have a different influence of those teas. I will tell you more during this video. What I choose for myself today is this tea here. We call it uh, Black Rose. And we call it Black Rose because of two reasons. Well, it is extremely aromatic, uh, extremely floral, like a rose, and it is a black tea. In fact, even the cultivar that is used for this tea is this uh, Huan Mei Gui, which means in Chinese yellow rose, and it is a cultivar that usually is used for oolong. But processing it, processing it like a black tea also brings out some bitterness. So I wanted the tea that have a lot, a very high aromatic profile, very floral, and at the same time can bring out bitterness. We will see soon why. So now let's start with the first method that I call hot in fridge. So let's see what it's all about. First of all, this method, you have to think a little bit in advance. You cannot say, oh, now I want a cold tea and tuck, you get it. You have actually to start uh, kind of few hours in advance. So I did actually prepare this tea yesterday afternoon. And what I did, I weighted uh, the right amount of leaves. You need uh, 12 grams for one liter of tea and uh, of course you have to adjust a little bit the quantity according to taste according to the tea but if you start with 12 grams for one liter you are at a good uh, starting level i would say then you simply put the leaves uh, in uh, a glass bottle for example you boil your water or you bring boil the, the temperature of the water to the temp to the to the level where uh, it is good for your tea just as you would just do a hot tea and uh, you pour it over the, the leaves, you put the lid on, you want to steep it with the lid on, otherwise uh, the liquid will start reacting with the air, with the oxygen in the air, we don't want that, and you brew it for the amount of time needed, usually between three and five minutes. For this particular tea, I, go, uh, I went for uh, five minutes. Now, usually I would brew a black tea at about 90 degrees centigrade, I went a little bit higher here because the glass was still uh, cold and uh, I would lower down the temperature, so you have to adjust also the temperature uh, a little bit. Now, I waited those five minutes and when that was done, I poured, I filtered out basically the leaves into another glass because I really wanted to stop the brewing like I would do for a normal hot tea. And again, I put again the lid on. At this point, I will have to leave the tea cooling down before I do anything else and I can actually recollect all those leaves that I've used, those 12 grams of leaves, because you can keep them for a second brew, either hot or cold. It won't taste at the level as the first one, but you can certainly try, in particular for very aromatic uh, uh, tea like uh, this one. So that's what I did. And this is the start of the first method uh, that I say they call hot in fridge and while we wait that this cool down, cools down, I will show you now the second method. The second method is also one that you have to prepare pretty much in advance, um, maybe not as much as the first one, but uh, uh, so sorry, that way around, and maybe not uh, like just a few hours, you really need uh, a whole day, so you have to do it the evening before and it is the classic cold brew. Now for the cold brew, 
you need le you need less leaves you need about nine grams for one liter also here it depends on the tea so i waited more or less nine grams yesterday but you can play a little bit around with the quantity for example i remember in a tea shop in uh, chicago I cannot think right now at the name but uh, when i was visiting him they were telling me that when they do cold brew with japanese green tea they use a bit more leaves up to you try it out and check your taste so what you do you basically pour put the leaves into the glass into the the bottle that you have and then you simply pour water at room temperature you pour water at room temperature on top of the leaves when it is full and you want to full to have a bottle that you feel completely don't leave so much air in the bottle overnight then you put the lid on and at this point actually you are done you have to put it in the fridge and then wait for yeah quite some time uh, actually you have to wait for the whole night until uh, the tea is ready so at that point uh, uh, yesterday after i've done uh, all the, the preparation for the cold brew the glass bottle in which i prepared the hot tea cooled already down and so it was safe it was cool enough and safe to take it and uh, put it actually uh, in the fridge uh, as well and uh, i marked the lead the different teas with the different uh, names because uh, i have to remember them the next day so today actually what is what but uh, uh, for you if you do several uh, um, cold tea in summer you might want to use that uh, label just to write which tea you are doing because the color can be fairly different as, uh, according to the method so you might not be able then to recognize it the next day since you don't have the leaves in there uh, anymore so now i actually pretty much told you uh, how the preparation of the first two tea uh, went and uh, uh, this morning when i got up it was already time actually to remove the leaves from uh, the cold brew i um, yeah i i had actually done it a little bit earlier in the day so uh, i really when i got up uh, i went uh, out to the kitchen i did that so well let's see what i did the cold brew has been in the fridge for the whole night and here it is what i suggest doing is uh, to gently move around the leaves because uh, in the fridge it's so cold the water doesn't move so um, all the flavors is close to the leaves and before filtering them out i want that that flavor goes into the water so just very gently stirring up then i use again my filter and i simply filter out the leaves usually kind of eight 10 hours are sufficient uh, i have done this cold brew yesterday afternoon so it has been about 14 hours in the fridge it's okay i mean as long as you don't leave it for days 10 hours 14 hours is all good and let's avoid now that all the leaves come out okay yeah and that's uh, pretty much it so you will filter it out is quite a different color with respect to the hot brewed one uh, we will compare later and now i just put it back in the fridge and i continue with all the rest at that point i have the two teas the hot in fridge and the cold brew that are ready to be drunk but today i want to show you two additional methods before i go ahead actually and i taste all of them and for doing so i have to go uh, back to the kitchen and uh, um, I will need this as well. So let's go. So the um, third method is uh, called uh, on ice western. That's the way I call it. And uh, it's uh, as the word say is on ice. So we will use ice and it is western style and you will understand soon uh, why. So what we do, we have to wait that uh, the water uh, goes up to 100 degrees centigrade. I have already weighted here 12 grams of uh, leaves. So again, you need 12 grams of leaves for one liter of tea at the end. So I will pour the tea 
in my jar here, in my bottle. And here we go. The ice is in the fridge and uh, we'll do that uh, soon. So this method is uh, um, kind of a, a fast way of getting a cold brew. You don't have to wait the whole night long, but you can just uh, brew a very hot temperature and then you pour it over on ice. I have the ice here in the fridge. We will wait just, uh, we will take just in a minute. And uh, then uh, you, um, you pour basically the, the tea on top of the ice to melt the ice and bring everything at temperature. So how much ice, how much water to use? A very quick way to go around that is to use actually the same amount of water as of ice. So we have one liter of uh, final tea. You can take half a liter of water and half a liter of ice. And if you brew at 100 degrees centigrade, you have uh, a final uh, iced tea that is close to uh, zero degrees uh, temperature. Now, um, it can be a little bit more tricky when you change the quantity and uh, maybe you brew a different temperature. And for that, I have actually done a little tool that I want to show you uh, right now while the water uh, goes up to temperature. I have my computer here in front of me and uh, uh, let's see how that uh, goes. So you see these, uh, this tool here and uh, you can select uh, the different parameters here in blue. So for example, this is the quantity of water that you're using, the temperature, not the temperature at which you are brewing, but the temperature of the tea, of the hot tea when you pour it on ice. So you have to consider that the water will cool down a little bit while you brew the tea. And then you have uh, the mass of the glass in which you will pour over your tea because this will um, in influence quite a bit actually the final temperature. Then you have uh, the temperature of the glass at the beginning, the quantity of ice and the temperature of the ice. And you put all these parameters in here and on this side you see the final temperature, how much of the ice melt and if there is any water that freezes. So the most important thing is about here. And uh, you always go to go a little bit here in this tool higher with temperature with respect to what you're actually uh, want to achieve because not all the heat in the water will melt the ice. Some of the heat will go into the air. So if it says like here we have uh, 6.8 degrees centigrade, actually the final T will be a couple of degrees uh, uh, cooler uh, than that. So, how are we here? We are at uh, 65 degrees, so just give me one minute uh, and then I will be back with you. All right, the water is ready. So now I will uh, uh, take uh, my scale. I put these uh, on the scale because I want really to measure the right amount of water. And I said, if you just want to go ahead and do it PML down, it's just half and half if you brew with 100 degrees water and you're fine. So now I'm going to pour, as I showed you before in the table, 420 gram of water. Do it fast before my, my scale melt here. Okay, it's a bit more, it's uh, 540. And uh, I put the lid on, always important. I look at the time. So 433, okay. And here we go. Now we have to wait that these uh, uh, steeps. I say that we have a little bit uh, uh, some time, so I want to show you how I keep on using that tool. And in case actually you want uh, uh, to have this tool, you can just drop us an email, info at nanoshan.org, and I will send you the, um, the link to it. So you see that now um, what, uh, so now you see, what I'm going to do is uh, to change these to 40. And let's say that if I reduce, because I can fit only one liter in the, 
in the pot so I reduce the amount of water you see we go a little bit higher with uh, the temperature but you will see that this is not uh, much of a problem because uh, the um, uh, as I told you before uh, actually the temperature will be a little bit lower than what is given here but this tool is uh, quite useful if you want to double check that uh, the you melt all the ice or because if you leave a lot of ice we, i mean might be fine but you have to know that then while the ice will melt then your tea will become uh, uh, more watery and more watery right so in the meantime we have another couple of minutes so i'm going to take the ice and I start waiting the ice we said we need uh, 460 Yeah, I have my eyes and uh, I'll move these things a little bit around uh, and here we go. So, we need 460. So I just go ahead and wait my eyes and I say try and go by feeling of course uh, and uh, uh, but sometimes you just have to do it uh, once you measure the amount of ice for your a pot that you have at home and then you don't have to do it uh, over and over again because once you've done you know how much uh, you have to do it to put it next time so we said uh, quite a lot of ice eh? okay so this is a uh, okay, really a lot yeah so this is 350 here we go actually I can do like this this is 350 and we want it 460 here we go and a little bit more It's 450, um, yeah, I think, well done. Otherwise it really will be too hot, my tea. Hmm. Let's try. I'll try with these, I can always add a little bit of ice in, in case uh, I feel I need it. So, but it's quite a lot of ice, so let's see what happens. Of course, this tea is now uh, kind of cooling down. I have my filter here. We have uh, just uh, um, one more minute and then I will pour it over. Okay, we are almost ready to pour it over the ice. Now it's super concentrate, of course, 12 grams for just less than half a liter, but by pouring it on water, then uh, it will be easier I usually tend to uh, pour it relatively slow and directly on the water sorry on the ice so that uh, most of the heat goes on the ice and it melts so it will take a while to melt all the ice Uh, here we go so now we have to wait a little bit of course uh, it takes uh, some time in the meantime actually I don't need this anymore so I can just uh, rinse it and I re-pour it over let's see how this goes mm -hmm. and I pour it over because I want to keep uh, the bottle sealed you can uh, always steer it a little bit it will uh, speed up the uh, melting of the ice and here it is yeah it's still uh, not yet there because it has to melt uh, completely the ice but we have time I put it on the side and now I go ahead and I show you the fourth method and the fourth method for the four method, I actually will need uh, kind of a guy one and uh, a pitcher is more of a 
plastic style, this may be I need. I have here 4.5 grams of leaves that I will use for 150 millimeters of tea at the end. I already weighted it before. And let's see, we have a sticker for it, so that I have a sticker for everyone. And uh, this one is uh, on ice gongfu. So you pretty much know what is going to happen uh, right now, but which is the quantities here? You have to go a little bit more ice than what we did before, just because, well, I don't want to go into the detail of the scientific aspects of it, but trust me, you want to put a bit more ice than water. And you can always, uh, uh, if you have the tool, use again the tool. So let's do that and let's see what comes out. So on the tool here, we have to change basically all the data. So mass of the water, let's say we go with uh, 0.75, 75 milliliters. We say the water will cool down, so 90 degrees is fine. I know that this pitcher is 140 grams. Temperature of the glass, about 25 degrees is fine. Mass of ice, uh, let's say we write uh, 0 0.75 as well, so it's 50-50. And you see that uh, the, um, the, the water temperature is quite low, actually. We are not even able to melt all the ice. So I will put a little bit, uh, uh, well, of course, because here there is a, a mistake, sorry. So now, now it's more fine. Now it's 50-50, 4.6 degrees. Actually, um, this will be quite cooler than that, a couple of degrees cooler. So I will reduce, uh, I would reduce here a little bit the mass of ice and increase the mass of water. But first of all, let's see what uh, we have, because, you know, the ice comes in cubes. So uh, we have to see how much quantity we have there. All right, so here I am, I'm ready with these. I put my 4.5 gram in the guy one. We want to go back to 100 degrees. Um, about the ice, let's take the ice. We think we want about uh, 75 grams, maybe a tiny bit more than that, so. I weighted it here. No, that's already, it's all sticking. So, 30. Hmm. 50. 64. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a small piece here, but yeah, let's see what happens if I put this. Ah, it's 79, okay? And I say that you don't have to do it that precisely. It's just, you know, if you feel like you can go for it. But here we have 79. And I leave it here on the side. And if I check back uh, on my tool, and I correct the quantity of ice to 79 and reduce these uh, to 71 so that we have 150 milliliters in total. It's fairly cold, so I'll go for just a little bit more water here. 85. This is fine because this will be actually not 7 degrees, it will be about 4 degrees or so. So 85, we will go for 85. Eighty-eight, eighty-nine, a little bit more, which is fine because at the end the leaves will uh, soak some uh, some um, some water. And here you do just you know a classic gongfu cha. So in this case, for this black tea, you may want to wait forty-five seconds, maybe a minute. Now I didn't look at the time; I just go by feeling, and let's see what comes out. 
in the meantime you see that here we are almost melt completely the ice so because when I do the tasting later I want to have all the four at uh, more or less uh, the same uh, temperature right because the temperature affects also the taste and since I want to make a comparison I'm doing it so precisely when I do iced tea I don't always use a scale okay and here we have uh, so we have to wait a little bit here because it's quite um, yeah it has to melt and basically we are pretty much done with our uh, setup here so now let's take all the all the stuff all the tea that we have prepared yesterday that is in the fridge and then we can go ahead and compare them so we have the first one that we prepared here the hot tin fridge and here we have the cold brew and uh, as you see the cold brew is uh, quite a different color with respect to the hot in fridge although it's actually exactly the same tea there we go this is yeah almost there I said it takes some time and if you steer it it will help yeah here we go how do you like it let's see the color actually I will This seems the darker, right? Pretty dark. Yeah, by far. Darker, lighter. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, these two we have even done with the same amount of leaves. And by experience, I know that uh, for, um, for cold brew, you usually use uh, less leaves. So let's go ahead and taste it and see how they are. Where should I start? Uh, this I want to see that I want to wait until it cools down a tiny bit more. So. I will start, uh, well, let's start with this one here. Now I'm, now I'm curious. So this one, you would need about uh, one hour to get it ready if you put the hot tea in the freezer and about six hours if you put it in the fridge for one liter. Mm -hmm. I will tell you about the taste in a second because I want to compare certainly refreshing and it has some strength it has definitely some strength in it so let's move on with this one here with the cold brew this is the more the classic way I do actually um, iced tea at home Is the one that usually I like the best. Although it depends really on the tea. Mm -hmm. So, as you would expect from the color, it is lighter in taste, but uh, it is lighter just because there are some uh, substances lacking there. Just because we didn't make the brew at hot temperature, not all substances in the leaves we're able to dissolve into the water so here you have a taste that is much uh, fresher in a way it is more aromatic and doesn't have bitterness at all while here there was uh, a little bit of a bite to it however this one takes uh, more time this while this you can do in the freezer in one hour for this one you really have to wait the whole night long so let's see how it is this this is pretty quickly done right uh, we you have seen it while i was doing it you have just to wait pretty much the five minutes the five minutes for uh, the um, uh, for the for the brewing it is it is somewhat in between but uh, honestly i like this but this one much better yeah 
I cannot tell you why, because I really steeped them in exactly the same way, but uh, in this case we had the con this concentrate, right? We had to put only half a liter of hot water with 12 grams of leaves, and what came out was really a concentrate of, uh, um, of taste, while here we really brew it in one liter of hot water. So that's, uh, that's uh, substantially a difference, and although the two goes close to each other, uh, they are, yeah, they are actually um, different. And this one is more, is more full of taste, is more balanced. You have a little bit of bitterness, a little, a little bit of aroma, all mixed well together. And this is a bit rougher and uh, uh, not doesn't have the same strength. And now we go for uh, the gong fu on ice. Mm -hmm. this, is, this goes in this direction actually in the matter of taste so I have to say the two that I like the most by far are these two this is probably my favorite although with something in particular with poor I would tend to do this because I like that bitterness in poor and these mm, I mean like everything right if you do it in a fast way, maybe don't, you don't get 100% the real, the real thing. It's good if you want a nice tea right now and you do it this way, but you lose some, uh, some taste. And now I want to do a head-to-head -head comparison actually between uh, this one and this one here. Because I want really to see what makes uh, it uh, so different. Color-wise, if I look in the cup, they're very similar. So we start with this. <laughs> Guys, no doubt, no doubt. This one is so much better. So it is okay if you want, you know, a jar of cold tea quickly done, but if you really want to want the quality, you have to wait those hours, yeah. And now let's do a comparison maybe between uh, these two, although, you know, just because by color they are kind of closer. And let's see. Um, you don't get uh, with every tea so much difference like the one that I am uh, getting here with this uh, black rose, because, uh, for example, white tea doesn't have uh, that bitterness, so it pretty much doesn't matter if you brew it this way or this way, you will get a more consistent uh, uh, taste profile. Just here you have a bit more florality and less of that hay taste. Mm -hmm. Very aromatic, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And you have this floral note that remains in your mouth. Mm. You know what? These two has really something in common now that I recall, and it is for sure related to the fact that we did a concentrate brewing. There is a kind of an off, a tiny bit of an off taste. It's very hard to describe, but it is related to the fact that actually we had to brew them concentrated. All right. Go ahead, try yourself, and let me know which one you like the most. If you have the black rose at home. Try also maybe with that one and you will see the difference. Play around with uh, the, the quantity. As for my personal suggestion, I would say if you like some strength and a little bit of bitterness as well for a more complex taste and you have time to wait, go for this one. If you're more into light and floral taste with no bitterness, even if the tea leaves are bitter, you will not get the bitterness out if you do a cold brew in the fridge and go with these two if you prefer a, um, yeah, a nice tea just uh, right on the spot. Uh, the, the advantage of the Gong Fu method is that you can continue, of course, this is just the first tip, but in this case your leaves are in here and what I will do, I will just continue brewing it. You, you do it uh, and you continue. Just the next time you have to use a little bit less ice because the pot is already cold. And that's it. I hope you have enjoyed these four ways of preparing iced tea. 
If it is the case, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe our channel if you haven't done it so and more videos like this will come your way very soon. Thank you guys and I will see you next time. Bye.